One of the most important yet seldom heard from members of the Hendrix clan is Jimmy's younger brother, Leon. Here he is in a 1982 interview I conducted at his busy home in Seattle. Only thing I know is what he told us later, that he met Billy Cox in the, uh, in the Army. They used to jam a lot. Right. And then, I, you know, they didn't, they didn't see each other for about five or six years after that. Okay. Okay, Jimmy, the next thing I know is that fun, one day Jimmy calls up my dad. I'm at home. He says, Dad, I'm going to be a star. That call was from London, England. Yeah. He said, I got some people here that's going to make me a star. They're going to change my name. They're going to call me the Jimmy Hendrix Experience. That was Jimmy's name, though. Because he, he always came up with some far out names. He came up with the exper name The Experience? Everything about Jimmy was him. Anybody else that got connected with Jimmy, they were doing a free ride. Because mm -hmm. Jimmy was a creator and, and a gentleman. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Okay. All right, so the phone call came. And uh, this is, this is, what happened? He ain't been home for five years. Right. Okay, this is five years. Okay, I'm since I was twelve or thirteen, then I'm I'm about sixteen or seventeen now. Okay, I'm at home. I'm staying with my dad, you know, a little bit. He gets me, you know, out of jail or something. You know, I had a couple of scrapes with the law. No big deal though. So Jimmy calls home after five years, and you know, my dad says, "All no, right." You hadn't heard a word in five years. Oh, we got a letter about every six, seven months, maybe every year. You know, a letter. And um, we always knew Jimmy was playing music, you know, but <laughs> but uh, but we never, you know, really realized what he was talking about because you know Jimmy used to call up from Vancouver and said, "Yeah, we got a band up here. I'm gonna spend the weekend. <laughs> you know, we're doing great. You know, we're gonna be big stars or something like that." So you thought this might be another one of those calls? No, I didn't think that. You know, I, all I did was, you know, I wanted to talk to Jimmy, you know. Did you talk to him? I don't think I did. <laughs> In fact, I think I wasn't home at the time, but my dad told me he had called. Right. I said he was going to be a star. I said, oh, far out, good, you know, great. You know, I'm getting my hair combed and I'm getting ready to go out. <laughs> the next thing that happened is, what, um, you heard the record? Yeah, we heard the record, Purple Haze. I said, that ain't Jimmy. I said, Jimmy don't play on music like that. Because <laughs> it was a new sound, you know, it was a, it was a catchy sound, it was different. You know, it was, dun, 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 you know, something like that, you know. And it was different, and it was, it was nobody dig, dug it at first. Nobody did, you know, because it was just totally different and new, you know. But then, every time you, Everywhere you go, you'd hear that, dun, 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 dun. <laughs> you know, everywhere. And so I finally got into it because I started to listen to the words, you know, like he said, Purple Haze. He, see, he wasn't talking about acid, but the acid people talked about Purple Haze, and that's where they got that Purple Haze acid from, okay? They, now, named, they named the acid after the song. Yeah, after the song. And they, Jimmy didn't name the song after the acid. Okay. Now, Purple Hayes, he, what he's talking about is, is having a, a spiritual experience. You know, purple really being the, the color of the royal blood of our Lord, you know. Or I'll, I'll, I'll probably, you know, trip it out a little bit, but forgive me. Okay, excuse me while I kiss the sky. You know, you got to look different. You know, I started to hear that I said, I, you know, I said, is Jimmy nuts or something? You know, I, here I am. I'm a, what do you call it? I'm a, 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 a really a street bum. Right. Okay. Okay, I said, what's this guy talking about? And so um, I, I finally started listening to the music, and I, and I got the whole album. I started listening, and I said, is this my brother? You know, I'm, I'm not spiritual or nothing at this time. You know, I'm, I'm very carnal, you know, living in the streets, you know. 
uh, doing the hard times, you know, you know, the hard times that everybody goes through. Mm -hmm. That's 14 or 15 living, you know, in the streets, <laughs> you know. Uh, so I start listening to the music and I start becoming a fan because of what he was saying. You know, he was saying there is something else out there. There is the unseen, you know, there all the all the things that are in the universe that are unseen are the most powerful things like gravity and atmosphere. You know, these things can't be seen, but. They hold the whole earth together. Because if you can just get your mind together and come on a cross yeah. with me. What he was saying, he was saying that just like I, I, won't, I won't compare him <coughs> with a Jesus or anything like that. But what he was saying was that, look, there's a world and a realm that nobody, nobody cares about. It's out there that nobody even cares about it because they're so engrossed. Are they so carnal? They're, they're held down by gravity, in other words. This force they call gravity, that they just take for granted, is a force that can't be seen, but it's the most powerful force in the world. It's like music, you know. And that's what, the, that's what he was talking about. He was talking about there was another world that was full of life, you know, and filled with fantastic things. Now, I don't know if he had the right road or the right way, because there's only one way to that. But I know... But I, I can't I can't know I, oh, I can only know by that last poem when he said the story of Jesus so easy to explain after they crucified him you know and then I then I then I got it what he was talking about is himself he says I speak and speak and nobody hears but when I'm dead then they'll hear what what he was trying to do was he was trying. Like he told me before, he says, hey, listen. He, like one time he, when he came to town, he says, he says, what do you think I'm doing? You know, I, I came backstage, he says, what are you doing back here? You know, I says, hey. I, <laughs> I says, shoot, Jimmy. I said, there ain't nothing out there. You know, this is where I want to be right here. And he was mad. He, what he didn't want, he didn't want me messing around with these people. Because... Backstage is different than out front. There's, there's ugliness and hectic and bullshit in backstage, you know. But when the, what the audience sees is just the, you know, what Jimmy could give them, you know. The final thing was what Jimmy gave them. But underneath all that was the cussing and the, you know, you know, trashy people, you know, the managers, the, the guys that would get drunk and sit, you know, and, and lay down and get drunk and get sick under the stage. You know, that's, that's, that's stuff I was sick of. You didn't want you corrupted. Well, that's, you know, I could tell now. That's what, that's what he was saying. He was saying, get out of here, you know. You don't want to be back here. You know, go out and watch the finished product. That's what he wanted me to do. He said, watch the finished product. But he knew all the time, I was a backstage guy, because I was backstage when he used to play his first five dollar gigs, you know. So I, you know, I was I was experienced.